Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the various reasons that can get your account terminated or banned with Adobe Stock. If you're uploading to Adobe Stock, you're making that money on Adobe Stock, uh, it's a good idea to be aware of some of the things we're going to mention. This is going to be a little bit of a lengthy video. We're going to go over a lot of different things, a lot of different examples. So definitely get ready, buckle up for this long video. With that being said, if you want to see more Adobe stock content, right? So things today we're talking about what not to do effectively. You want to learn about what things you should do. I have a free lesson here on our members area. And if you go to the members area page, you just scroll down, you go over here, how I run a stock photography AI business, you can go ahead and watch this video. And then we have other paid videos for Adobe stock. I'll go ahead, not just Adobe stock, but stock photography in general. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and check out this free members area. We also have other free lessons there as well as, as well as paid lessons. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and talk about once again, what not to do. A lot of creators are going to give you tips on what to do. You know, they'll say, upload this kind of art or do this or do that. And all that content is great. You know, it's great for improving your success, making you help or helping you make more money. But we also have to know what not to do. That's maybe just as important, if not more important, because let's face it, if we do everything right, but we also do some wrong things here and there, it could be the reason why we lose our accounts. So let's go ahead and get into it. And the very last thing I would want you guys to do is put all that work in and lose your account for it. So the first requirement is you have to be 18. So I've said this before, but if you're a parent watching this, you have a kid, they could work for you on that account. It just has to be under your name because when they make that payout, they have to either pay out to an LLC, to an S Corp, to a C Corp, whatever, to you. Um, so they have to make that payment, right? Um, to somebody who's over 18, which you know, is either a sole proprietor or a business. Okay. So that's the first thing, but they can actually do the work. If you have a kid who's, you know, a child or something like that under 18, they could do the work for you. Uh, that doesn't have to be necessarily reported. Um, so that's really the first kind of thing. Then they have some content submission guidelines. So if we look here, what are some of these guidelines? The first thing is intellectual pop property guidelines. Some of the things that I'm going to mention, some of these guidelines, some of these requirements, you'll actually see that there are reasons why your images get rejected. So for example, if I create an image with a certain kind of name uh, in the image, it's going to get rejected for intellectual property guidelines. Content must not infringe IP rights, such as copyright, trademark, or similar design rights as detailed in our IP guidelines. So for example... Um, let's say I don't use any keyword, but let's say my design, let's say I create an image of a castle and that castle happens to look like the Disney castle. It's not a wise thing to put that image in there, right? Because that is an intellectual property infringement, right? I don't own that design to the Disney castle and I'm taking images that look like it. Now I'm putting Adobe in risk. Okay. I'm giving them problems and they don't want that. So the first guideline is intellectual property. You don't upload things you don't have the rights to, you don't have ownership over. Of course, there are some things that you can parody, some things you can alter, but best case scenario, at least for Adobe, don't do that. Now, there's other sites that they kind of do allow it, you know, um, but once again, Adobe is a little bit more refined, more strict, and definitely more... Um, they don't like these kind of problems, right? So the second one is third-party right guidelines. So third-party rights, does somebody have the right to that work that you've uploaded? It says content must not infringe on third-party rights, such as publicity, privacy, property, cultural, and similar rights, as explained in our third-party guidelines. We can actually go ahead and click on what these third-party guidelines are, but I'll give you an example. Imagine if I have a nice sports car, right? Or somebody you know has a nice sports car and it's iconic. It's one of one. And you go there and you photo you shoot photos of that sports car and you publish it. And if you don't report that you were uh, you have a release, you are allowed to and it's a recognizable property, that's a problem. So you shouldn't shouldn't do stuff like that. Um because once again it opens liability to Adobe. The thing is, when you upload an easy way, because I know it's hard to memorize all these things, the easy way is think of it like this, okay? 
could this design, could this image, could this whatever get me in trouble? If the answer is potentially yes, or could it get Adobe in trouble? If the answer is potentially yes, then really don't upload it, okay? Publicity rights. These are these are some of the rights of the third-party guidelines. Now remember, think of that car example that I gave you. Publicity rights, privacy rights, property rights. So if I own my property, right, it's maybe I don't want it public. Maybe it is public, but maybe I don't want you to profit off of that image. Privacy, property, okay? Cultural property, other third-party rights, and they kind of list some of them. Content removal and termination. So your content may be removed or your account may be deactivated. You don't want to keep doing these mistakes over and over and over. I understand they could be a mistake, but try not to. They're going to allow it here and there, but try not to, okay? Um, same thing, guys, if you create some images with um, the AI, right? Any kind of AI tool, don't you, or as best as you can, don't use some trademark terms. So if there's an artist's name, right, that you like to include in your prompts, don't submit those photos. Give yourself the best, op and, I, and I completely understand we all make mistakes, but give yourself the best opportunity to last in this business as long as possible. Here it says generative AI content guidelines, okay? Constant content submissions made using AI, artificial intelligence, AI tools must meet these guidelines. So if we click on what these guidelines are, number one, you have to ensure you have the appropriate rights to submit. So this goes back to those property rights, right? Do you, you know, we'll just read them. I don't even have to give you examples. It says may not contain the artist names whose work is still in copyright may not contain names of people, may not imply the con content is a depiction of an actual newsworthy event, may not contain names of government agencies, may not contain references to third-party intellectual property. So that Disney castle that I, that I gave as an example, that's an example here. Um, government agencies, we know what that is. FBI, you know, things like that. CIA, right? Those are government agencies. Here, it says, may not imply content is a depiction of an actual newsworthy event. Ukraine-Russia war, that's a newsworthy event, right? So images like that, you don't want to include, right? May not contain names of people. So if I type in The Rock in my AI art, right? Dwayne The Rock Johnson, that's his name. That's a trademarked name. Aside from copyright, that's trademarked. That's intellectual property, kind of, right? Um... And there's a difference between trademarks and copyrights and things like that, but it's IP, okay? Uh, may not contain artist names whose work is still in copyright. So, for example, if um, I'm an artist and I make a painting, right, and that painting is under copyright because there are certain laws behind copyright around, around the artist and things like that, then I can't use that kind of stuff. Uh, if you're aware, guys, in the world of art, print-on-demand, certain things like that, there are certain laws where copyrights and trademarks eventually die. And um, I think certain ones last like 25 years, certain ones last 15 years. You look at, for example, the Mona Lisa. People can monetize off of the Mona Lisa now because the Mona Lisa is now, nobody has direct ownership of it, okay? It's out there. Uh, but if I create a painting... Technically, people can't do that because I own it. I'm still alive. I, my, you know, if I'm not alive, my family can access the the profits of it. Things like that. Here it says label content as generative AI. So I've done this mistake many times. I forgot to label it generative AI. Now that's a mistake. That's an amateur mistake. There's no reason for that mistake to be done. But let's face it, we're all human. We all make mistakes. So. For, you know, one of the things you want to do, of course, the second you upload all those AI images that you've created, just highlight all of them and select that little button that says created using generative AI, okay? And obviously, if the image wasn't used, use, um, wasn't um, made through generative AI, don't click on it, but uh, that's an example, right? Um, if there are people in the image, okay, if there's anything that's recognizable, all right? Um, or excuse me, not recognizable. You want to make sure this is clicked if it's created by AI. So if there's a person in the image, like you say, uh, a model wearing a brown sweater holding a rose, 
you want to click on this because there's going to be a person's face in that image. Okay, very important. If I take like, for example, tell the AI to create a picture of an apple on a tree. In that case, I don't need to click on this. Okay, so keep that in mind. It says, does this use generative fill and generative expand in Photoshop and generative recolor in Illustrator? Require labeling as an image as generative AI. So they're asking here, does an image that uses generative fill or generative expand in a Photoshop or, you know, any other software really, does it require for you to mark it as generative AI? And it says here, label your image as generative AI when using AI generative tools, Photoshop, still Illustrator, etc. So if you have a normal image, but you expand it and use AI, make sure you apply that AI function on there, okay? Here it says examples when you wouldn't be obligated to label an image as generative AI. It says extending background for any other for any reason, removing IP or other forms of retouching, removing distracting objects or people, recoloring the background of an image. So understand here there's a difference between these two. So here they're giving you examples of when you do need to label it as generative AI and when you don't. This list here, like recoloring the background, even though it was used by an AI tool, it's not an overly predominant function. That's the kind of the way I look at it. So, or removing like something distracting. So imagine if I take a picture of a car and let's say there's someone in the background standing there. Okay, and I use an AI tool to get him out of there. You guys have seen it before when I use Lumnar Neo and I erase the human standing in the background that I don't want them there anymore. And it literally just fills in the background as if that person was never there, cleans it up. That is a use of AI, but I don't need to mark that as AI, okay? Here it says, select the accurate asset type and add title with the keywords. Is it an illustration? Is it a photo? It's really only gonna be one of two, okay? Um, so in this case, <clears throat> Excuse me, they show different versions, right? So it says here, examples of generative AI images that should be submitted as asset type photos. Then it says here, examples of generative AI images that should be submitted as asset type illustrations. So they showed the, the difference, right? And to me, guys, it kind of looks at like the difference between real life and fiction, right? So in real life, we would not find a zebra with flowers all over it, kind of like this. That's an example of an illustration, okay? Um, and, and marking them off properly is important. And, and we're tackling right now all of the AI concepts. So it says here, do include the main subject of your prompt in your title. Do include the individual words and concepts from your title in your top 10 keywords for extra bump in search relevance. So let me read that part again. Do include the individual words and concepts from your title in your top 10 keywords for your extra bump in search relevance. That's a little tip right there. But once again, if you join some of the paid lessons, you'd probably already know that. But don't add generative AI to titles and keywords. So don't do that. And that was actually something that a lot of people did when the AI was starting to be allowed on Adobe, okay? It says, your generative AI content prompts, titles, or keywords may not contain artist names, may not contain names of people, may not imply the content is a depiction of an actual newsworthy event, and once again, we already read this, but may not contain names of government agencies, may not contain references to third-party intellectual property. Number four. Model and property release requirements for generative AI content depicting people. So this is now going over the rules of the content depicting people. It says, do upload model releases for generative AI, AI excuse me, assets depicting real people. Do upload property releases for AI, a, a generative AI assets depicting real property. Do not submit were created with prompts referring to people, places, or property unless you have legal right to do so. So what they're talking about here, they're talking about the model releases. So a example is I can take my face and I can train it on other people's bodies for AI. I can create images 
It doesn't even have to be a specific person's body, but I can create other people's random images with my face on them, okay? Uh, I need to use still a model release because I'm using my real face. Now, I don't have to use a model release if it's not a particular person. It says over here, it says, if the generative AI content was not based on a real person, but it visually appears to resemble a person, then you must click people and property are fictional in the box. So that's the solution for that, guys. Okay, once you click on that, right, there you go. If there are no recognizable people or property in the image of the video release, no release is required. So if that person's face is not recognizable, meaning it's not me, it's not you, it's not anybody we know, and it's not a celebrity or anything like that, then we're good to go. We don't need to have a model release. We just need to click on that button that says, you know, it's a person, okay? And it's made by AI. Prior to prioritize quality. So this is pretty obvious, but one of the biggest issues that art art images uploads whatever you want to call it gets rejected from adobe stock is low quality issues that's their number one thing okay at least for most people and you can even look at some of your submissions check is it the number one reason for rejection probably it says here do review our top 10 lists for getting you generative ai images or videos approved let's click on that we'll actually hold on let's click on that a little bit later um, we can actually view a video on that later, but we'll leave that there. Do check your submissions carefully to make sure the anatomy of your content is intended and relevant. So when they say the anatomy, what they mean is really they would don't want anything disfigured or something that doesn't look proper. So if your AI image is making a photo of somebody who has four eyes or six eyes and four ears, it's not going to look good. So they're not going to approve something like that. They're telling you make sure it, the anatomy of your content is intended and relevant. Relevant is their way of saying like it makes sense, okay? Um, use generative AI tools to create work that fills content needs with the collection. So once again, I want to read this because this one's very important and, and it goes over people's heads. Use generative AI tools to create work that fills content needs within the collection. So when you're creating a collection and you're uploading it to Adobe Stock, you have to understand that not all images will fall into a collection and they don't make sense to be there. So part of the reason why this is very important is when you upload uh, like packages of images, right? And you submit them, Adobe Stock will look at them and say, okay, these images make sense. These images don't make sense. And when you have an image that's really blatantly out there, for example, if I create images of patterns and then one image is an image of a model with four arms, it doesn't really make sense, okay? Especially because of the context of that image, it could be, re you know, rejected. Um, and it should be based on other kind of requirements. It says, do select only images, vectors, or videos which provide unique value to the collection. Notice what they say here, unique value. So this is something that I went over in the paid lessons, but we went over how to maximize the images that you create and the outputs of them without keeping repeating the outputs. It's not wise to, for example, create 100 variations of the exact same image. And I talked about this before, but the variation needs to be drastic enough to where it's deemed a different image. If the image is too similar, it, it's not gonna be a good image. And more importantly, Adobe's not gonna be happy with that. Now they might approve you over time, but understand there are people who might be uploading for years and then they lose their account. They're probably creating errors behind the scenes that somebody finally catches on. They might submit their account for review and next thing you know, they lose their account. So. Don't be scared if you've submitted images before. You can potentially remove them if you want to. However, one of the most important things is don't keep making the same issues or the same errors again, especially if you're watching this, okay? The next part, do select only images, vectors, or videos which provide unique value or iterate that. Don't use an image, a vector, or a video that you don't have the rights to as a parameter 
of your generative AI prompt. So once again, if there's an artist name, right, which 99.9% of the time the artist is not going to want you to use their name in the prompt, but you use it, that could potentially cause issues down the road. Okay, don't describe or depict subjects or locations in ways that may mislead buyers. What does that mean? It means if I create, for example, a picture of a model standing on a waterfall and that waterfall with the prompt was created, um, uh, you know, Niagara Falls, for example, I'm not going to write in the title Panama Waterfall. Okay, I can't mislead people. So that's an example. And finally, sub do not submit multiple versions from the same prompt or similar iterations of the prompt. So when they say similar, they're talking about the output of the image. Now here they mention the prompt, but you also have to ask yourself why. It's because if you click on this spam policy, we're not going to do it now because we don't want this video to be too long, but if you click on this spam policy, it's going to kind of talk about how images need to be different. And if images are too close to the same, it's considered spam. And when you're uploading images, guys, once again, you can look at some of the reasons why images were rejected. You know, sometimes the image might be low quality. Sometimes the it might be an intellectual property issue. A lot of different issues. One of the things you don't want to do is contribute spam to your account over a period of time. Now, once again, it's fair to make mistakes in the beginning, and Adobe understands that, and they allow you to make mistakes, and they'll, that's why rejections exist. But to keep making mistakes, they're not going to appreciate that. And that, once again, it's going to hurt your account in the long term. If you want to see another part to this video, because I don't want to make this too long, our next video, we will talk about the 10 tips for getting your generative AI images approved on Adobe Stock. That link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and watch that next video. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out. Bye.